Hi everyone, I hope you are enjoying this podcast season so far. Before we get to the main episode, I want to introduce an upcoming webinar to you. Provident has always advocated term insurance to ensure our clients' protection needs are adequately covered without overpaying. And so, Haven, a new specialised insurance advisory, independent of Provident, was established to serve the men on the street with this same philosophy. So click the link below to register for this webinar to find out how Haven has put together many measures to mitigate the inherent conflict of interest in insurance sales. I hope to see you there. And now, let's get into the main episode. Hi everyone, I'm Jean and welcome back to another episode of Providence Money Wisdom Podcast. I feel Chris once again with me. Um, Chris, basically, aren't you bored of talking to me every time? Uh, I have no choice. <laughs> I agree. Okay, so anyway, we'll be uh, we'll be speaking about your most recent Business Times article on CPF changes and retirement planning. Mm. So my question to you is, why are you writing about CPF changes once again? Yeah, this is my second article on the Business Times about CPF and I've done quite a number of podcasts and I know that there are many other people who have done uh, podcasts and written articles about CPF as well. But I felt that I needed to sort of like address some um, uh, misconception. Um, and also some questions on, you know, what do you do now after the changes that are made and they've been announced? Because I think a lot of the articles and a lot of the podcasts that have been done uh, mostly talk about the changes, uh, mostly talk about the impact. But I felt that I wanted to write one that uh, focused more about the solution. Yeah, so I decided to write one. And also this particular article, I had a chance to compare CPF Life with a private insurance plan mm. just to show that, well, firstly, uh, overall, I think CPF Life is still more superior. However, there are some features with regard to uh, some of these are, um, a retirement insurance plan that might be attractive for some people. So I thought I'll put it up there, let people compare and let them make a decision for them, uh, make a decision for themselves whether they want to choose CPF Life, they want to put all into uh, their CPF to buy mm. CPF Life, or they can split between CPF Life and a private insurance plan. Okay. I think for a start, right, could you just remind us again about the CPF changes and mm. how all this will impact the retirement planning for individuals? Uh, there are two changes. Uh, the first one really is about um, from next year onwards. Uh, people can top up their retirement account up to four times of the basic retirement sum. So the new enhanced retirement sum will be equivalent to four times of the BRS. As compared to now, it is three times of the BRS. What that means is that people have an option uh, to top up more if they want to. And what that means is that they can also put more into CPF life and enjoy a higher payout. So that's the first change. And I think people are generally okay with that change because it's an option. If you don't want to put so much money, then you don't put so much money, right? So that one, uh, no real impact, I would say. Or people are not upset about it. The second one is the one that people have been talking about. And that is the closure of the special account come uh, when they reach uh, 55 years old. Uh, it's going to be effective from the beginning of next year. That has impact for people who are trying to shield their uh, special account, right? Because... Uh, prior to this change, uh, what a lot of people do is that uh, they try and take out their monies from their special account before they turn 55 years old by investing in a low-risk instrument. Then after 55 years old, they sell away the investments and move the money back into the special account. And now the special account has got a lot of cash. The special account, as we all know it, gives 4%, pretty high, guaranteed. The capital is guaranteed. And after 55 years old, they have a lot of liquidity. But with the closure of the special account after 55 years old, the money is now moved to ordinary account. So instead of getting 4%, they are getting 2.5%. Mm. So that's the change, I think, that got especially those people with uh, a lot of CPF money to be quite upset. Mm. Okay. So in terms of retirement planning, right? how do you think this will really impact them and what should they do moving forward? Yeah, honestly, I think it depends on uh, who these people are. Mm. I think majority of the people will not be impacted because the majority of the people will not have a lot of money in the special account anyway after 55 years old. But for those people who will have money in the special account, they are going to get 1.5% more. Mm. Uh, in my first article, I've said that if you have got 200,000 in your special account earning uh, 4%, and if you are withdrawing $3,000 a month, mitigating for 3% inflation a year, that money will last you about 5.7 years. But 
now that the special account is going to be closed and if the money gets moved to ordinary account, the same amount of money will only last for 5.5 years. So it's just 0.2 years of difference. So I don't really think it's going to affect people uh, that much. Uh, I've also written an article on what to do about it. Right? If uh, that money uh, in your spending plan, and please read the article because I don't mm. want to repeat what the article yeah. say, but basically uh, if your spending plan is such that the money in your special account, had it been around, it's meant for your immediate drawdown. Then when it is moved to your OA, uh, I don't think you should do anything major about it right? because you need liquidity. You need to draw down immediately. But what you can do is just spread the money into uh, some other instruments that give you a higher yield uh, so that you can stretch your money a bit uh, longer. Yeah, so anyway, like I say, please read the article to understand more. Okay. Uh, but for monies that you intend not to draw down until many, many years down the road, mm. maybe 10 years down the road, then yeah, you can decide to invest it. Okay. So in your article, you also discuss about the importance of not, you know, not making a financial decision in isolation mm. without considering like a thorough spending plan, right? Mm. So I'm just wondering, for, mm, for people who are thinking about coming up with a spending plan, how should they, you know, are there any practical tips to go about doing it. Yeah, so a spending plan is really there to enable the lifestyle that you want, mm. to enable the life goals that you want to achieve. So I think first and foremost, you need to sit down and really think about the life that you want to live, mm. right? Uh, I mean, I don't know what kind of lifestyle you want to live. I do not know uh, where you want to retire. Uh, I've been hearing a lot of people talking about retiring... Uh, not in Singapore, but somewhere else. Uh, you decide. You decide what is best for you and the kind of lifestyle you want to live, right? And once you have decided on that, the next thing is really to estimate the expenses that you may incur if you live in those places or you live in Singapore. And after you have done that, then you split your expenses into what we call essential expenses and uh, discretionary mm. expenses. Essential expenses meaning things that you definitely must spend. Discretionary expenses means that they are uh, good to have. Yeah. Right? Mm. Now, once you have done that again, then you list out all your assets that you have accumulated all these years. And your assets could be in property, could, uh, could be in properties, could be in stocks and shares, and definitely you have money in CPM. There could be mm. many other things. right? So now the next step, which is the most complex, is then to match these assets that you have accumulated mm. uh, with your expenditure. Um, so again, I've explained that in the article, so I don't want to go deep into it, but that's essentially what a spending plan is. Sometimes it is called asset liability matching. You know your liabilities at certain age. Maybe you want to retire at 65, so you know that you have your first so-called drawdown happening at 65, mm. and then maybe 75, maybe 85. Then you match the assets you have, uh, uh, you have accumulated so that they will pay out these expenses. That's ALM, asset liability um, uh, matching. So once you have the spending plan, then I think you need to see where CPF all fits into the spending plan. And then you decide what to do because of the changes. Okay, uh, thanks for sharing that. I mean, I know that the, like, we, we should read the article to understand better, but I was just wondering, like, in order to fund, for example, the essential expenses, right, what kind of key considerations should one take into account to, you know, when they think about assets? Yeah, I mean, essential expenses, like I mentioned, these are expenses that, uh, in our Singaporean lingo, is the die-die you must spend. Mm -hmm. yeah, you'll be things like paying for uh, PUB bills, you'll be things like, uh, maybe even uh, medical expenses that you cannot claim through insurance. Um, it will be your your food, your grocery. I mean, these are essential expenses. You you need to spend them. Right? Mm. So because these expenses are essential and and uh, you must have money to pay for them, yeah. then the asset or the instrument that you use must also be able to give you an income no matter what happens out there, no matter what happens to the financial markets, it must be able to give you that income. And it must also be an asset or an instrument that will mitigate longevity risk for as mm. long as you live. So if you base on that criteria, there aren't mm. many other assets you can use. Of course, you can use NOT plans. Mm. CPF Life is one of uh, such NOT plans. You can use private NOT plans uh, sold by the insurance companies 
although there aren't many. Uh, mm. In fact, uh, over the weekend when I researched it, I think there is only one, if I'm not wrong. Uh, you can of course use uh, retirement income plans. Okay. They pay up to 100, 120 years old, which I think is good enough. Uh, you can buy a bond uh, that pays uh, a coupon. Mm. However, if you want to buy a bond, the capital base must be huge. Not many people can have that huge capital mm. base. And if you buy a bond, then from time to time you may have to refresh your bond list, right? Because some of your bonds may mature, mm. or you may not like that bond anymore, and you want to change to a better a bond. Yeah. Uh, so these are some of the instruments. But basically, the criteria is that it should pay an income regardless of what happens out there in the financial markets, and it should be able to mitigate longevity risk. Hi, listener. We hope you are enjoying this episode and podcast series so far. At Provident, we have been sharing our thought leadership content through various mediums beyond just this podcast. If you are interested in knowing more, check out the link in the show notes to subscribe to our newsletter today. Thank you, and let's get back to the episode. I think you spoke about um, the different assets, for example, CPF life, private annuities, uh, retirement income plans. So I, I think to some of them, right, they may not be very familiar with all these mm. different instruments. Mm. Are you able to share some of the pros and cons that people should take into consideration? Ah, so in the article, and again, please read it. Um, I compare CPF Life with one of the popular retirement income plans. I mean, if I have space, I will compare as many as I can. Mm. But I've compared only one, and I've said that. Uh, uh, for the rest that I didn't compare, it shouldn't deviate so much because it's an insurance plan, and we all know that for insurance companies, they have to use the same projection in terms of return for their life fund, right? Mm. So the current projection is uh, between three percent to four point two five percent, and in the article, I use the higher end of the projection. I use four point two five percent, and again, it's a projection; yeah. it's not guaranteed. Um, well, what I found out is that. Firstly, CPF life payout is definitely higher in your lifetime. For the retirement income plans, the payout is lesser, but the bequest upon death, the death benefit of this retirement income plan that I compared, is actually higher than CPF life, right? So all in, mathematically speaking, if you look at the payout plus the bequest upon death, all in. CPF life is still better, mathematically mm. speaking, right? You will only choose the retirement income plan if you want a higher payout upon death, but which is ridiculous because when you buy an uh, uh, annuity plan or you buy a retirement income plan, you shouldn't be buying for a higher payout. Mm. The reason why you buy this kind of plan, uh, sorry, you shouldn't buy one that gives a higher bequest. Mm. Right, because the reason why you are buying this kind of plan is so that the payout is able to meet your essential expenses. Yeah. That must be the the the, the uh, first objective. I mean, nobody buys an annuity or buy a retirement income plan because of the death uh, benefit, mm. right? But in my comparison, um, the one thing that's interesting is that this insurance plan you can surrender anytime you want, mm. and if you surrender, you can still get something. Whereas for CPF life, as we all know, once you join, right, you can't terminate it already, right. So there is no liquidity with CPF life. With retirement income plans, there's still some form of liquidity. Some, f- I say some form because when you surrender, you are actually losing some money, mm. But at least you can surrender it. And why would you surrender? I don't know. I mean, for some people, maybe they decided halfway through, uh, they decided to terminate the plan, maybe because. Their health has uh, has deteriorated. Mm. They are not going to be able to see the money ten uh, years later, right? What's the point, right? Yeah. So maybe some people will just want to surrender and take the money and enjoy life today, before they leave this world. Mm. Um, the personal insurance plan allow you to do that. The CPF life, you you can't. Uh, and some of the retirement income plans, there are some extra frills, mm. special benefit, you know, things like that. But again, I have to say that. You should not be buying a retirement income plan for those frills. Your focus is actually should be on the payout, lah. But I have listed some of the pros and cons down so that you can make an informed decision. Uh, if you cannot make a decision, I mean, one thing you can do is no Singaporeans are left or right. We take the middle stand, right? So then maybe when you reach fifty five, you don't top up your RA up to ERS. 
you just have FRS, and then the rest of the money you can go and buy the retirement income mm-hmm. plan. Right, so you diversify. You have to accept a lower payout, but you have some flexibility to surrender. So basically, the article is about uh, putting it down very c- clearly so that you can make an informed decision. Mm. No, I was just about to ask because you know the CPF life amount varies depending on how much you put into mm. you to fund the ERS or FRS. So I think you made a good point earlier to say that you can put a bit into to fund FRS. Then the rest you take it out to buy the private yeah. plans. Are you able to give any advice in terms of what is the most optimal amount that someone should consider to maximize the CPF life? Yeah, I think the starting point is how much you need for your essential expenses, right? So let's say today you need six thousand dollars per month as, uh, for your essential expenses, and if both you and your spouse top up your RA up to the ERS next year. Both of you will have about 6,006, 6,007 when you reach 65 years old. And that matches your essential expenses. And actually, you can just do that. Top it up all the way to ERS next year and then you have your essential expenses mm-hmm. match. So that's the first thing you think about, right? But however, and I've, I think I mentioned it in the previous episode, next year, ERS will be 426,000. And if both you and your spouse put it in, it will be close to 900000 yep. It's a lot of money to be stuck that you cannot liquidate after that. Right? And if 900000 is 80-90% of your total asset, then I wouldn't do it. Right? Because then that leaves me with very little cash. That leaves me with very little liquidity. I wouldn't do it. But if you're cash rich, right? 900000 is just 20-30% of your total asset, then I'll do it, mm-hmm. right? Because uh, it, CPF Live is a pretty stable instrument, uh, AAA guaranteed uh, capital for now, interest guaranteed for now, right? So I will do it. So you have to make your decision first with how much expenses you are trying to meet and then see whether when you put in, it constitute a large part of your liquid cash before you decide. Uh, like I say, if you don't like the loss of liquidity, there, there are always other options and you can diversify into using other instruments. Mm. I think one, one question people might have on their mind is, how do I know how much CPA Life will give me? So, I mean, I, I, I'm just trying to like help these people by mm. saying that you can go to the CPF Life estimator, estimator yeah. for people who are approaching 55 soon That's right. yeah, to kind of get an idea, ballpark figure of how much they can receive. Yeah, yeah. so use the CPF live estimator. Of course, all those numbers that I've quoted earlier is assuming you're 55 next year mm. and you put in the ERS of 426,000 next year. But if you are listening to this and you are not 55 next year, uh, yeah, use the CPF live estimator to give you a good estimate of what it would be. But I, I also want to caution this, la, that although the 4% right now is guaranteed for your CPF live life fund, but actually, since 2008, the government has already said that uh, it is packed to the 10-year SGS plus 1%. Mm. Just that since 2008, the government has been guaranteeing this for. Yeah. So there might come a time, I'm not saying it will happen, there might come a time whereby this 4% might not even be guaranteed, right? So go in with your eyes open. Right now it's guaranteed, yes. But expect things to change. Yeah, on this or note, rather, sorry, expect things might change. Yeah, on this note, I think we always met, always say that people should be flexible. Mm. So I think once again, I would like to you know pick your brain onto how you know people with their retirement spending plans, right? How they can remain flexible mm. with all these like government changes or even changes in their lives. Yeah. yeah. Firstly, it's all about being conservative, and actually that's what we do as well for our uh, retiree clients, right? Be conservative, meaning to say that when you are planning for your expenses. Mm buffer a bit more than what you think is needed. Right? So if you think you need $5,000 a month, I'll say that well, you should plan based on $6,000 or 6500 Always mm-hmm. buffer a bit more. Secondly, keep the planning projections lower. Right? So um, what I mean is that uh, let's say you have pots of your money that are invested into uh, equities or bonds. I will say 
uh, use a lower planning return, mm. right? Don't look at the current return. I mean, currently, like last year, equities market gave 21%. If you look at the last five years, equity markets gave about maybe 10, 11% annualized every year, right? But I'll say use a much lower planning return uh, so that if the world doesn't give you that kind of return, the markets uh, don't give you that kind of returns anymore, at least you have used a much lower return to plan and you have uh, buffered for it. The other thing that uh, we do uh, in our spending plan is that we set aside a sum of money as reserves. We call it the reserve market. Okay. Right? Just in case the market really cannot give you that kind of return, uh, even no matter how conservative we use the planning returns to be, and if the markets really cannot give you that return even, then at least you have reserve markets. Mm. Yeah, so be prepared. Because I think if you are very conservative in all these numbers, then I think you should be okay. But when the tire meets the road and when you are retired and really for some reason, everything goes wrong, right? You're not getting the returns. Uh, even your reserve bucket may not be enough. There's extreme circumstances already. Then what are you going to do? Actually, then you should sit down and relook at your budgeting and see whether you can spend even lesser. Right? So what I'm trying to say is that when we put in place a plan, nothing is fixed. Because the world will change. Because mm. your plan will spend many, many decades. If you retire at 65, uh, based on current life expectancy, we live until 85. And it might even be longer. 20 years, 25 years of retirement is a very long time. There are going to be many, many changes. Maybe more wars happening in the mm. world. And government policies will definitely change to adapt to the changes in the world. So, yeah, make sure that your change or rather your plan is robust and can cope with all these changes. Thank you, Chris, for sharing. Do you think you have any more last words, last advice for us? Yeah, uh, thanks for asking. I, I think that in your planning, even though I've said whatever I've said just now, mm. right? By, uh, like I've said, uh, be conservative, always have a buffer. I would say that uh, we don't have to wait until we are retired to make some changes to the plan. Right. Yes, we put up the plan. We need to continually monitor it. Meaning to say that if we observe that, for example, the, the returns from the markets are already slowly dropping, we need to go back to the plan, start to make changes already. Mm. We don't wait until when we retire and then we realize that, oh yeah, it's true. The markets not the markets are not giving me the return. Mm. Then we make adjustment. I don't think that would be wise. Yeah. I think we should already be making changes to our plan along the way when we realize that hey, yeah, uh, yeah, the markets are actually not giving us the return that it has been giving over the uh, uh, like the last five years. I think changes has to be made already. When the government has uh, made this announcement uh, a month ago, uh, you know our team, our solutions team are already changing the tool. Yeah. Right? And we will be progressively uh, doing the progress meetings with our clients mm. and make adjustments to their plan based on these changes. So, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Start to look at your plans when you realize changes are happening. Don't wait until you retire, you draw down, then you start to make the change. Mm. I think it's a bit too late if you do that. Thank you, Chris, for sharing. So that's all for this episode. I hope you benefited from this episode. And as usual, if you like our podcast, please do rate and follow us on your favorite podcast platform. And if you haven't read the article, the link will be provided below. Once again, thank you for listening and I will see you in the next episode. All analysis, views, opinions from interviews, recommendations and other information broadcasted, podcasted or published herein are provided for general information purposes only. Information expressed does not take into account any specific situation, particular needs or objectives and should not be construed as specific advice or recommendation. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with a qualified investment, legal or tax professional before taking any action. Provident Limited does not accept any liability or any loss whatsoever arising from any use of the information broadcasted, broadcasted or published herein. All contents and information contained herein may not be copied or reproduced in whole or in part by any means without prior written consent of Provident Limited. Thank you.